Most people are taught that the vibrato is to be used for musical expression. And while Dinas would have definitely agreed with this, he also believed that the vibrato was the basis of the left hand technique. The reason he believed this was because when you vibrate properly, your hand is relaxed, balanced, and the vibrato also helps open up the sound. Here's some of the vibrato exercises that Dunas gave his students. The first one is the rubbing exercise. This one teaches you the primary motion of the vibrato, which is a rubbing motion. When you vibrate, it should feel like you're rubbing in a spot on the fingerboard. To do this exercise, start with your hand isolated from your arm. To do this, you'll probably have to be higher up on the fingerboard like this. Start with your finger balanced. To balance the finger, simply lightly tap the finger or lightly pluck the string. Once the finger is balanced, move it up and down the fingerboard on a raised string. Don't press the string down. Do this motion slowly. Keep it very even and relaxed. Don't accent one side over the other. Once you feel comfortable doing that, you can gradually speed up the motion and shorten the distance that the finger travels. As this happens, the finger is going to be gently pressing the string down more and more, until eventually you're rubbing in just one spot on the fingerboard. You can repeat this with all the other fingers, and eventually you can do this on other parts of the fingerboard as well. Make sure to feel that the hand is leading the motion with the finger. The next exercise is the rotation exercise. This focuses on the rotation movement of the finger, which is the secondary motion of the vibrato. Start with your finger below the pitch, and then go up to the pitch like this. Do this in groups of two, three, four, and six. When we vibrate, the vibrato is roughly five to seven oscillations per second, five being a slower vibrato and seven being a faster one. So when doing this exercise, it's a good idea to take a metronome set it at 60 beats per minute, and to do each of the groups in one beat of the metronome. That means that when you get to the group of six, you'll roughly be doing the vibrato as fast as you would when you're normally vibrating. The next important aspect of the vibrato that you need to learn is releasing the impulse. When we vibrate, you shouldn't be constantly pumping your hand up and down to make the vibrato. Instead, you should have an impulse and then release. Here are some exercises that Dunas had his students do to learn the initial impulse of the vibrato. Start with your arm straightened out and your instrument in front of you like this. Make sure that your arm is straight so that it doesn't interfere with the motion of the finger. Move your finger up and down like this. Focus on just moving the fingertip because that's where the impulse of the vibrato should come from. Then imitate this motion while holding the violin normally. Make sure to only feel that the fingertip is leading this motion. You'll notice that after the impulse, I didn't allow the vibrato to rebound. It's helpful to practice like this so you can really focus on isolating the impulse. Once you've learned how to do the initial impulse, you need to learn how to release the impulse so that the vibrato can rebound. A great exercise that Dunas had his students do was the pizzicato exercise. Pluck through a passage and vibrate each note with the amount of intensity that you need to sustain the pits. You'll notice that your vibrato helps sustain the pits just long enough. It doesn't overdo it and doesn't pump the vibrato. That's the exact same feeling that you need to have when vibrating with the bow. Do 
Sometimes refer to the vibrato as an uncontrolled shaking motion. And one way to get the feeling of this uncontrolled shake is by taking a pair of keys and jingling them in your hands. When you vibrate, you're not supposed to pump the vibrato back and forth, but the hand is still supposed to move. To get the feeling of what it's like to move your hand without impulsing every back and forth movement, you can take a pair of keys and try jingling in your hand like this. When you're jingling the keys in your hand, you're not using much effort and you're not impulsing every back and forth motion. This is going to be an important feeling to remember when doing the vibrato. After the initial impulse, allow the finger to rebound. When doing this rebound motion, it shouldn't feel like you're moving the hand back and forth. That's especially important to remember for longer notes. And remember, if you're not sure how much to impulse to get the right amount of rebound, you can simply pluck that note. Another way to teach yourself to keep your left hand passive when vibrating is to place your left hand down and to move the left hand with your right hand like this. This will teach you the feeling of what it's like to keep the left hand passive while it's moving. If you ever get tense when vibrating or trying out one of these exercises, one thing they can do is to take a sheet of paper Put it on the fingerboard and to slide your hand up and down on the fingerboard like this. The reason why this piece of paper will help is because when we touch a smooth surface like a piece of paper, our hand instinctively relaxes. So doing this will actually teach your hand to relax while it's on the fingerboard. The ultimate goal is to develop a vibrato that you feel comfortable doing at all parts of the fingerboard and with any of the fingers. Remember that your vibrato should reflect your musical voice. So when playing any passage, always stop and check to make sure that your vibrato matches your inner voice and the style of the music.